Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Your document strategy is about to be disrupted. Why is that a good thing? I'm Teresa Resick, Director of Webinars here at AIM, and AIM is your host and producer of our event. And with me today are AIM President John Mancini, and from Twofold we have Tim Miller. On Base by Highland and Twofold are the underwriters of today's webinar, and we thank them for their support. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. Before we get started, uh, one moment. And before we get started, just wanted to offer a few pointers for viewing today's webinar. Uh, by joining our webinars live, you can customize your own viewing experience. And feel free to open, close, or resize the different windows. And across the bottom of your screen is the list of all the widgets available to you. You can download a PDF of the presentation at any, at any time. Just look to the resources list, and that's to the right side of the slide area. There's also a few other documents and links in there to help you learn more about today's topic. Feel free to ask questions throughout the hour using the Q&A feature. We will hold these questions until the end where we should have about five or ten minutes to answer them. But you can also use this um, to uh, ask for any technical assistance or offer any comments as well. The webinar is being recorded and it will be posted to AIM.org's Webinars On Demand Library in just a few days. Now to take this uh, moment to introduce our speakers today, John Mancini is an author, speaker, and a respected leader of the AIM Global Community of Information Professionals. He believes that a wave of digital transformation will sweep through businesses and organizations now face a fundamental choice between information opportunity and information chaos. John regularly blogs at the Digital Landfill and can be found on various social media sites at jmancini77. And then we also have with us Tim Miller, who's the Director of Consulting at Twofold. And Tim has been delivering enterprise software solutions for over 25 years. He runs the software division of Twofold, who are proud to serve thousands of UK organizations. Tim is passionate about software making a difference and adding value to your organization. So right now, I am going to turn things over to John Mancini to begin talking about digital disruption. John? Great. Thank you very much, Teresa. Really appreciate that uh, kind introduction and also appreciate uh, Twofold and Highland um, being sponsors of this webinar. Um, I was mentioning during the little pregame conversation that we had offline how much affection I have for Highland. It was one of the first companies I met when I came to AIM 20 years ago, and um, that affection hasn't waned since then. So thank you guys very much for being sponsors of this. I really do appreciate it. Um, what I thought I would do is uh, set the stage for um, Tim and talk a little bit about some of the changes in the marketplace, talk about what I see as a real fundamental disruption that's going on in the marketplace, and talk about how that then manifests itself in terms of how I think you need to start to think about cloud. And so uh, that's my little mandate here for the next 20 minutes or so. And um, in doing so, you know, I realize that, you know, cloud is not necessarily for everybody in its totality, um, but I personally think that cloud has to be a fundamental part of your strategy. And so um, I want to start with talking about the overall macroeconomic environment um, and, and how things are changing so much, and, and then go from there to um, bridge into talk a little bit about cloud and cloud ECM and I think why you ought to be thinking about it in those terms. So let me just hop right in. And I, I usually tend to make presentations um, in terms of um, um, a number of either signs or rules or trends or whatever, so I picked seven this time. Um, and I was just thinking about this question about how the market is changing and how about the challenges facing companies are changing. So. The first one is just uh, a rather uh, like a duh one, which is, you know, we are in a period of accelerating change. And, you know, that's easy to say, but it is really hard to get your head around. And so if you think about this, it really is very fundamental. Um, there was a really great article in TechCrunch a little while ago in which um, they talked about, you know, what does it mean when we are in an environment where the um, largest hotel company in the world doesn't um, own any hotels, uh, Airbnb, the largest content platform in the world doesn't create any content of its own, you know, which is Facebook, you know, the largest taxi company in the world doesn't own any cars, which is Uber, 
And what it means is that we have gotten to the point where the accumulated benefit of Moore's Law starting three or four decades ago has gotten to the point where technology is fundamentally changing the nature of businesses and is doing so in an accelerating fashion. And there was a guy named Stephen Kotler, uh, one of these futurist kind of guys, and he said, uh, for the first time in history, um, leading experts are consistently too conservative in talking about the pace of technology change. So that's point one, just as an over um, overlay um, uh, of this entire conversation, is that we're in a period of accelerating change, um, and if, you know, if we think that the change we've experienced so far is fundamental, um, we haven't really seen anything yet. Um, what's to come is going to be even more fundamental than what we've been through already. And I think we have to think about that in the context of our businesses and our business models and how we treat information, because how we treat information in the context of those business models will fundamentally be the determinant of whether we're successful or not moving forward. So point one, accelerating change. Point two is that um, we have, we're in this, an environment right now in which business models, traditional business models, are being disrupted. Um, this little chart here, which I find really interesting, is, is just one example of this. Um, this is U.S. newspaper advertising revenue um, in the red line, and then uh, online revenues in the blue line. And so there's a couple things to take away from this when you think about um, just one business and, and how disruptive the times are in terms of thinking about that business's fundamental assumptions. So what, you know, obviously one thing, um, newspapers are largely supported by classified advertising, um, and classified advertising has basically disappeared out of newspapers and has been um, subsumed by Craigslist. So that leads to the collapse of that red line, and it also leads to the collapse of a lot of newspapers. It leads to scrambling around trying to find new business models, and that gets into the blue line, which is uh, online revenues. And I think the other aspect of this that is really amazing is that as classified revenues have collapsed, um, you would ask yourselves, well, like, well, where did they all go? And um, if it's been replaced by, by Craigslist, you know, what does that mean, and where did those revenues go? And the challenging part for this particular industry, and this is just a microcosm of lots and lots of other industries that are out there, um, those revenues got dispersed amongst millions and millions and millions of Craigslist users. And so um, basically a lot of that revenue associated with um, the classified um, newspaper industry in the United States, which at its peak was um, a $65 billion industry, um, most of those revenues have disappeared. So that's point two, is that um, there is a fundamental change in the economic nature of how people make money. There's been a dispersion of um, benefits and revenues in many, mo in many industries um, out into the Internet, if you will, and that impact is still being wrestled with by people. And so um, I think as you think about your own particular business models and your own particular industries, we all have to think about this in terms of what does this time of disruption mean to our business models. I can tell you in terms of an association, you know, which is what I run, um, it's been really fundamental. You cannot make money in the same way in the association business to keep the lights on like you used to. So fundamental changes in industry models moving forward. Third one is when you start getting down into specific processes. Um, and this particular one is um, a J.P. Morgan Chase model. And so what, what this chart basically shows is, okay, let's just think about one business process and how it's been transformed um, by these disruptive times that we're in. And so if you're in a teller-based model um, in the banking community, the cost um, per deposit is about $0.65 cents U.S., and so that's really been the, one of the fundamental assumptions upon which that entire industry has been built over the years. So you start getting into um, more modern ways of interacting with customers, and you have basically the ATM model is one that only costs eight cents per transaction, and then mobile direct deposit, you know, using your phone as a capture device, for example, is three cents. And so what's happened there is a rather dramatic transformation with information management at the heart of it, 
in just one key process within the banking community. So again, extrapolate this around to all the other businesses, all the other processes, and again, um, what's happening is that technology disruption is fundamentally affecting how we view our core processes moving forward. Fourth one I just wanted to talk about is this question of skills. And um, this one is one that is, is really uh, on my mind a lot. Um, you know, AIM does an awful lot of, of training out in the community. You know, our belief is that information is an organization's most important asset, and we provide the skills to help organizations manage that information. And so when you think about this in the context of the transformation that's going on in our workforces right now in terms of the entry of millennials, who are now the majority force within our workforces, um, it's a pretty fundamental thing, and it's fundamental in a, in a lot of different ways. You know, it has to do with um, the skill set and the expectations of information management systems on the part of millennials. When they come into our workforces, sometimes they think they've come into a computer museum um, because so many of our systems don't look like the systems they are used to using in their personal lives. Um, we have another aspect of this whole um, skills disconnect is that um, we have the largest number of people with institutional memories leaving our organizations right now because they're retiring. And, you know, how do we make sure that our organizations continue to function once that brain drain goes on? So this question of skills, um, our skills models are being disrupted. We need new skills out in the marketplace. We've got to figure out how we um, capture the information of the people that are leaving our organizations. And I think how people manage their information in those systems becomes critically important to really understanding um, how they ought to be um, uh, making this transition moving forward. So the fifth one is that, you know, we're in an era of new platforms. And this is one of my favorite ones because, you know, this is at the heart of uh, a lot of content and information management systems. You know, and we've all spent a lot of time thinking about um, collaborative systems, you know, whether it's SharePoint or other kinds of systems out there for people to collaborate um, in day-to-day um, uh, -day work. And so, you know, lo and behold, you know, you've got these uh, couple of characters that were basically in the, uh, I think they were in the software production, they were in the game business, that needed a platform that allowed globally dispersed um, workers to combine with each other. And they created their own platform based on Internet Relay Chat and basically turned that into this product called Slack. And Slack, in the, in the course of just a couple of years, has turned into a, um, a valuation of $2.8 billion. And it is really interesting to think about how that platform will be extended moving forward. And so, you know, what they basically have in mind, and they have a very open system, so it's really easy for other players to build systems on top of Slack, is to basically transform Slack into the central hub for all work communications. Now, this has all sorts of implications for people like us that have been in the document and content management business for years. You know, we look at something like this and we think, you know, well, where are the records? How is this being retained? How is this being audited? How is this being accounted for? And those are certainly still very, very real issues for people to deal with. But they have to do it in the context of this upheaval that's going on. And, you know, if you haven't played with Slack, if you haven't taken a look at it, if you haven't thought about it. It may not be for you, but you should at least understand what it's all about and how different it is from the traditional very heavy models of thinking about collaborative technologies in our organizations. Second thing, just to think about in terms of new platforms, is, is how some of the radical platforms that are out there are being extended. And Uber is a very interesting one um, to think about. You know, we think about it as just a taxi cab replacement. But, you know, basically they have much bigger plans for this. Um, you know, they basically say, okay, if we've got people driving around all over the place, you know, they can be used to deliver flowers. They can be used to deliver packages. They can be used for all sorts of other functions that basically a shared economy gives us access to resources that we never had in order to, you know, take somebody who wants to work 10 hours a week and um, put them to productive use um, using information management as the heart of that distribution system. So, so again, if you haven't thought about this question in your own particular businesses, 
Um, it's something I think that we have to think about um, because these new platforms are not just new platforms in the context of what they do right now, but it's also a question of what can be built upon them and how quickly it can be built upon um, some of these systems. And what does that mean in terms of disrupting some of our business models? I think the sixth one, um, and this is kind of a fun chart. This one was from BuzzFeed. And, and what they basically did is think about the question of, um, you know, there's a lot of very well-known um, consumer-based um, disruptive models out there. So Uber, everybody knows that in the taxi cab industry. Um, Tinder, I think, is kind of a dating-ish kind of a kind of a platform. Uh, Birchbox is this thing that um, my wife gets, where they, you know, you basically sign up for, uh, um, you know, nine dollars a month or some amount like that, and they put, like, load up all these cosmetics and they send it to you based on an information profile that you have. And the Airbnb we talked about earlier in the hotel business. And so, what they did with this chart, which is kind of funny, is is they say basically. How are people applying those business models to all sorts of other things? And this is just a part of the chart that they had in BuzzFeed. And where these boxes are filled in, these are places in which they've taken either the Uber model, the Tinder model, the Birchbox model, or the Airbnb model, and applied them to all sorts of things, raising from dogs to food to workspace to alcohol, storage. You get the idea. And, and the point here is that there is this wave of bottoms-up innovation that, you know, for a lot of us that are out of a, of a certain stage in our career, sometimes we don't really notice this or pay attention to this, but it is going on, and it is bubbling beneath the surface for most of us. I had to laugh. My daughter is a nurse. She uh, lives in New York City, um, and um, she, you know, we were talking about um, doing her laundry. And, you know, when we first, um, when we first were up and moving her into her apartment, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out a place that would be close to a laundromat or trying to find an apartment that would have a washer dryer in it or, you know, all that kind of business. And so uh, six months after she's there, um, we were up visiting, and uh, she says, oh, I have to have somebody come pick up my laundry. And I said, what do you mean? She said, uh, she said oh, I just um, uh, I have an app. And um, I basically, when I'm, when it's basically the Uber of laundry. And so when she she pulls it up, and there was all the little um, cars moving around on the map, and then she basically said, "Oh, okay. Well, somebody will be here in two minutes to pick up my laundry, and they'll bring it back later this afternoon, all folded up." And I was like, "Wow, this is really something that is that is bottoms up innovation that is largely invisible to a lot of people that occupy traditional spaces within organizations." The last sign of disruption is this networked economy. And this is just one example uh, from a company called Venture Scanner. And it's a little difficult to read on the screen. But basically what they did was they said, okay, let's think about this question of just the automobile. And let's think about all the different facets of connectivity that are now connected with the car. And so it ranges from things like um, how do you get rides? You know, that's the Uber-ish part. It goes into things like location and mapping, um, you know, that whole revolution that's occurred within GPS. It relates to how you manage fleets. It relates to how do you find parking spaces. And, and the point here is that what's going on in terms of technology disruption and what's going on in the cloud is basically creating opportunities to connect businesses that were previously unconnected and creating an opportunity for um, network advantages in connecting those businesses in ways that had never been connected before. So a very, very radical transforming force in terms of how you think about things moving forward. So as you think about this, I think, you know, we think about all those different seven signs of disruption out there. Um, I think it points to a need to really rethink some of our assumptions about enterprise IT. Um, and at the heart of this, is the cloud. And um, that doesn't mean, I uh, just want to make sure I'm clear on this, that doesn't mean that um, the cloud is going to replace everything. It doesn't mean that the cloud is for everybody. Um, most organizations are going to exist in a hybrid world for the foreseeable future. There's going to be some things that are in the cloud. There's going to be other things that are going to be on-prem. Um, there's also a lot of ambiguity and confusion about exactly what the heck the cloud is right now. Um, you know, a lot of definitions out there, but my main point here is that the disruptive model that's represented by the cloud needs to be a force that we think about 
as we plan our information systems moving forward and needs to be a factor, you know, particularly as we think about content management moving forward. So as you think about this, um, you know, there's, there's signs again all around about um, how important it is to adopt a mindset that thinks about the cloud. And so, you know, one, one example of this is um, TechCrunch did a list of 10 trends that are transforming enterprise um, IT. And at the top of the list is cloud computing. And you can kind of go down this list. And um, most of these, even though uh, cloud is listed separately, almost all of these have cloud components associated with them. Um, and so, again, understanding the cloud, understanding what parts are for you and what parts are not for you, all of that, I think, becomes really important that you, in terms of thinking about your models and thinking about how you view enterprise technologies moving forward. I think as you think about this a bit more, it also translates ultimately into a change of mindset. Um, this was um, from, I um, uh, can't remember where I got this. I apologize. Oh, Ron Miller, who's a great uh, journalist at, um, at TechCrunch, and I've known Ron for a long time. And he talks a little bit about um, how the mindset of CIOs needs to change. Um, you can get kind of a flavor of this as you go down the chart from strategy to culture to talent to technology. And basically it, it, it says that as we think about some of these technologies, we have to think about those lessons from the seven signs of disruption and manifest themselves in the businesses and how we view managing content moving forward. So as you think about this, um, I think one of the key factors to keep in mind is that when I talk to end user organizations right now, um, one of the challenges they have, and this is where a cloud strategy needs to factor into your overall business strategy, is that nimbleness and agility are everything right now. And one of the things that we all struggle with is that we're in many ways handicapped by our legacy systems in terms of building the kind of nimbleness and agility that we need to have in order to be effective moving forward. So as you think about this, you think about cloud not just as oh, it's cloud, it's an alternative technology, it's, you know, it's another way of handling content, um, so on and so on. Think of it as an agent that can build nimbleness and agility into your business models, which is really what you need in order to avoid disruption. So as you think about this, um, you know, again, it's um, think about how the great big giant platforms, Amazon and Google and Facebook, are building their businesses. Um, they are building these gigantic businesses that fundamentally rest on a cloud model. And so, um, and they are doing so at massive scale and tr massively transforming the economics of what it means to do all sorts of different applications out there. And as you think about this, it manifests itself in basically a new approach to enterprise IT. Um, you can you know, kind of think about this from the perspective of, on the right-hand side, from a technology perspective, um, think about all these different kinds of companies that have emerged, essentially building themselves on a cloud model, whether it's storage or computing or networking or applications or data storage or data intelligence. Um, all of these are companies that have risen just in the last two or three years, essentially using the fundamental economics of scaling and nimbleness in the cloud to build technology infrastructures that are very different from the ones that we are traditionally used to thinking about. And then also think about this in particular from the perspective on the left-hand side of this slide in terms of applications, you know, because there are applications out there now that reside in the cloud that um, create all sorts of new models for how to deploy applications in a very quick fashion. I will say that I have a lot of concerns about some of this moving forward because if we think we have a silo problem in our industry right now, um, and if we think we have a silo problem that's existed for quite some time, man, it's getting crazier now that people, as people go down the path of keeping um, application-specific content repositories within SaaS-based applications that don't talk to each other. And so as you think about this, it really, again, points to the fact that as you think about these more nimble SaaS-based process applications, you have to think about the, cl the content component of those applications almost as a layer in your organization and think about how do you, how do you standardize upon that and uh, I would say how do you standardize upon that in, a, in another cloud layer that uh, in, impacts those applications. So um, 
we talk about a lot of things in the ECM industry all the time, and these are just a couple of examples of some things that I hear from people um, out there in terms of some of the factors that they deal with in the content management space that are tied to this whole question of disruption. Um, they want to be able to access their content in a more mobile fashion. They want to do it um, with cloud-based services. Um, they want to allow their employees to bring their own devices. Um, they want to basically um, tap into some of the opportunities of enterprise file sync and share. Um, and then this all ties into the Internet of Things ultimately. So as you think about this, um, this chart was prepared by um, Graham Haddington, uh, Haddingham. And um, I really like it. I think, it's, I think it gives you a really good snapshot. I would urge you to come back to this after this um, webinar and take a close look at this. Uh, because again, the point that I'm trying to make here is not that everything shifts to the cloud. It's not that every single um, kind of information belongs in the cloud. A lot of it doesn't belong in the cloud. And there's also a difference between private clouds and public clouds and hybrid clouds. Um, but my main point here is that there are advantages and disadvantages of the cloud. You have to think about, have to adopt a cloud mentality, if you will, to thinking about some of these solutions and not be so um, tethered to the traditional way that we have all looked at this that we miss these opportunities because the newcomers coming into the marketplace are tapping into these advantages um, and they're untethered by our existing um, legacy systems that we have. So think about this, come back to this chart. Um, Graham did a great job on this chart and really think about the advantages and disadvantages and how you incorporate some of this thinking into your long-term planning uh, moving forward. So, you know, as you look around, um, there's a lot of disruption out there. Um, I think you have to really spend a good deal of time doing some market intelligence in terms of understanding, you know, what are your competitors doing in order to deal with some of the disruption that's out there. Um, what solutions are they using? How are they thinking about it? Um, this pace of change is rapid. Uh, we have to figure out ways to keep up. And, and I think that we have to start to think about this from a cloud-first and mobile-first mentality and then back into our existing business models and figure out um, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate to our particular organization. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, my friend Tim Miller, who's a Director of Consulting for Twofold. Um, I would urge everyone to keep an eye on the question and answer tab. We'd be happy to answer questions along the way. Um, we'll also have a little bit of time at the end of the session in order to uh, talk about questions. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Tim, and um, I'll come back in a few minutes. Thanks, Tim. Hey, thank you, John. Um, I, I feel, everybody, that my job has been done. So uh, um, we'll, we'll end the, sem the, uh, the webinar here, and no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> John's been talking very eloquently there about disruption, and, and I wanted to share with you some of the experiences of our own organization and, more importantly, um, our customers. And I think one of the, one of the biggest disruptions of uh, my own business was, you know, 10 years ago, we were developing and selling our own document management system um, out to customers. And, and some other players came into the marketplace, and we, we looked at solutions like Highland OnBase, and others are available, of course, but we, we, we saw those solutions, and we closed down our development. We closed down selling our own applications and became resellers and systems integrators of those fantastic systems that, that, that exist. Um, but what, what I want to talk about um, is, you know, going to the, the, the title of, of the webinar, is your document strategy about to disrupt be disrupted, and I, I believe it is, but I, I believe it's a, it's a good thing because, you know, 10 years ago, the whole sell around document management was that you had information, but it was trapped in a paper prison, and if you only got it into a document management system, it, it would live and breathe, and that wasn't necessarily the reality, I'm afraid. What we actually found was that information went from a paper prison into a digital dungeon. Um, and so many of the customers that we spoke to, they, they hated, they detested the document management systems and enterprise content management systems that their organizations had deployed. Um, the users hated them. They were difficult to use. Uh, they took them away from the core uh, work that they were doing day to day. And from an IT perspective, these things took ages to implement. 
Uh, I remember one guy joking with me that it, it um, you know, the, the length of time on average it took to implement an ECM system was longer than the average marriage lasted, um, which, I, which I found incredible. Um, he then went on to say that he actually had a better relationship with his ECM system than he had in his own marriage, but I had to point out at that point uh, I don't actually do uh, re relationship um, advice. So. To, to the point of, you know, what is your own individual document strategy? I think when we talk to our customers, they've actually got a hybrid approach. You know, when we go and talk about ECM, enterprise content management, they'll say, yeah, no, we've, 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 we've actually got a few of those. Thank you very much. Uh, we might have two or three already and through acquisition. You know, I, I think the most we found is one organization had eight full enterprise scale uh, content management systems. So we, we've got documents uh, all over our organization in these uh, big enterprise content management systems. On top of that, we're also storing documents inside applications. You know, we've got Salesforce for CRM and, and we're, we're storing proposals in there. Uh, we've got an ERP system, maybe SAP or Oracle, and we, we're linking documents in there. Our, our HR system allows us to store documents in there. And, and then we've got line of business applications for the organization that we are and our, our core policy system or banking system or claim system. And we're storing documents um, in, in there as well. And then on top of that, our, our, our our staff are storing documents on their local drives of, of their servers, on the local drives of their PCs, or maybe they're storing them uh, in enterprise file sync and share systems um, out in the cloud. So documents are existing in many locations, but I think by far and away what, what, what we find when we talk to a lot of our customers is uh, the de facto standard document management system bar none that everyone seems to use is they store documents in, in Outlook, uh, and that's where they go and find and search documents quickly because if they can't find them in one of the above, oh, well, I'll just I'll go and search for the email where I sent it, uh, and that's where I can find the information. And this has led to what, what I believe a, a huge challenge for um, IT departments. Um, there's, a, there's a massive pressure on them that really, frankly, is impossible to deliver. You know, on the one hand, they're trying to keep the lights turned on. They're supporting tens or, in some cases, hundreds of applications that need to be updated. They need to be kept compliant, and, and they need to be loaded and running on modern architecture and modern operating systems. And whilst they're running all of those, the business and their customers are saying, you've got to innovate. We've got to have multi-channel. We've got to run 24 by 7. It's got to be on any device, not just a corporate device. It could be the customer's or the staff's device. And, and by the way, IT, can you do all of that, please? But we're slashing your budget, and you've got to do it with less people. And I just think, frankly, it's made the whole challenge in IT almost uh, impossible. And because IT then struggle to deliver, the business doesn't accept that. So you get a whole culture of shadow IT, where the organization departments actually go out on their own and go and buy things um, and, and, and solve their own problems. Hey, look, IT, you, know, you, you haven't delivered this, so we've gone out and we've bought this internet thing, or we've gone out and bought this cloud solution. Oh, but by the way, uh, could you please support it? Could you please keep it up to date? Oh, and you need to integrate it into all the rest of the back-end systems. Uh, that we have. It's, for me, I, I think it's a, you know, it's a significant challenge um, that, that our organizations are, are, are having to face uh, to try and look after that. And frankly, whilst organizations are dealing with that challenge, the customers, they don't care. Um, you know, I've got a picture of a cat there. I don't know if it's true. I've, I've heard this story that, you know, if you die uh, and you own a dog, um, the dog will sit next to you and pine away and be really upset. Um, but if you own a cat and you die, the, the cat will eat you. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but I certainly know that it's true that if your cat goes out and someone else next door or down the road is looking after them better, uh, giving them more love and feeding them, they'll move in with them. And, and customers, maybe they're a bit more loyal than cats, I don't know, but customers tend to be in the long term fickle things. And if other people can service them better, if there are disruptive providers out there that can, as John said, bring your laundry around within a couple of hours, well, it's much easier than having to drive somewhere, drop it off, and wait three or four days uh, to get it back again. So customers don't really care about your challenges. They just want you to deliver, and they want you to deliver today uh, and in a way that, that, that they want you to deliver. 
So frankly, where that comes as far as your document uh, content uh, and content management strategy is concerned is you, you, you're given a simple choice. By the way, um, the, uh, the educated people out there, I didn't know this, this is a picture of Charles Darwin. Uh, it's not a picture of me. Um, and Charles Darwin, uh, you know, he had a very simple motto, you know, you, you either evolve or die. Um, and that's what's happening to organizations. And John listed a, a whole list of organizations that uh, have sprung up. He could have equally done a, a, an even bigger list of organizations that have had their lunch eaten from underneath them by these new entrants uh, into the marketplace. But I believe that this disruption ultimately is, is a good thing. And I think if you look around at the, uh, at the providers, um, for me, enterprise content management, especially in the cloud, is for me an absolutely fantastic thing. Um, you know, I'm trying to say on this slide, it's you know, it's the best thing since uh, since sliced bread. Um, but you know, it it really um, is a, a, a phenomenal set of, of of technologies that you know, in the past, these horrible old ECM systems that took years to implement. Well, now if you deploy in the cloud, these things are so easy to use. They they live inside Outlook or they live. Uh, inside the applications that you're using. They, they're implemented same day. They're always on 24 by 7. They're always being updated um, by the vendors to the very latest uh, technology and the very latest uh, functionality creeps in um, version after version. And, and out of the box, these systems are compliant and, and they've got controls uh, and security baked in. Um, so your whole solution is just sitting there waiting effectively for you to start tapping into it um, and other new entrants in the marketplace that perhaps aren't tied back with some of the legacy systems that you're running within your organization are taking advantage of systems just like this. And, and I believe using these kind of technologies, it, it effectively means you can have your cake and eat it. You know, to John's point earlier, John said the key is about nimbleness and agility. Well, I think if you start taking a look at, at what some of these new enterprise content management systems can do in the cloud, they're not just about storing your documents. They're actually about delivering business efficiency and delivering solutions to your organization, literally at the speed of thought. Uh, we need to solve solution X. Well, you can start building, prototyping, and delivering it same day, not waiting weeks and months or years before it gets onto IT's roadmap, and then you've got to get a bunch of developers to start building it, uh, and then it goes through QA, and you know maybe by the time that it actually comes out, you still work in the organization and haven't moved on. But with these systems, you, you can have that nimbleness uh, and agility, and the efficiency and control is, is, is there uh, from day one. So I, I guess in conclusion, um, yes, I'm, I'm biased. Yes, I'm involved with these technologies, but I, I, I'm struggling to see a downside. So um, I, I, I pinched a, a thought from uh, from Mr. Jobs at, at Apple to try and think of some of the some of the downside of this technology. And you know, when you write the business case, the the, the fact of the matter is these technologies that exist out there, whether it's ECM or or other systems, they actually cost you less. To subscribe to them, then you're probably currently paying for maintenance for the core systems that you have now, and they deliver way more. Uh, and as I say there, you know, to, to the second part of the business case, just 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 see the first line. A wiser person than me said many many moons ago, uh, "Do what you do best as an organisation, and, and outsource the rest." And I have to say, if you look at the technologies that are out there, and John's mentioned some of them, obviously I represent some of them, and uh, we're underwriting some of them today, but there are some fantastic opportunities, and I'd, I'd, be, I'd welcome some of your questions and to uh, continue the conversation with John um, uh, uh, as we uh, can continue the seminar. But that, that wraps up uh, my slides. Um, if, if you're uh, interested in uh, contacting us or uh, following up with, uh, with any of the points that we've raised, then there are some links uh, available within the uh, webinar that you can download. Or if you look on the left-hand side, there's links to our LinkedIn uh, profiles. Please feel free to, uh, uh, to link in to me there. But I guess at that point, I'll, I'll hand back to, uh, uh, to, Dere to Teresa and John, uh, and we'll move into the questions. Thanks, Tim. Uh, we've just been listening to Tim Miller of Twofold here, and before that we were listening to John Mancini of AIM. And I'm just going to leave that contact information up on the screen for just a moment. And as Tim mentioned, um, in the bio section on the left side of your screen, there's some uh, additional links there to reach out to Tim. 
and certainly links there for reaching out to John. And then on the right side of your screen in the resources list, um, in addition to the copy of the slides here, PDF of the slide presentation, there's a lot of other really good resources there. Um, some links over to Twofold's consulting website for some good information there, some information um, uh, on base by Highland had some good links. And then there's also a new ebook uh, from AIM on digital transformation that's also available for you to download um, that's in that resources list. So uh, a lot of really good stuff over there. Um, I want to get over to some of the questions now. And um, John, I just want to get through the, this one question, a little bit of a al alphabet soup on your slide, um, uh, where you had that chart of um, you know, ECM um, on-prem versus the cloud. There were the, the initials in there, uh, the letters TCO, and just wanted to have you clarify exactly what that meant. Yeah, I think, and uh, I'll go back to that slide just so uh, people can take a look at that. And um, I believe that's um, that's total cost of ownership. I apologize for that. Usually I try to scrub and uh, wind up in an acronym-free zone, but I missed that one, so I apologize <laughs> for that. But it's total cost of ownership. It's the idea that um, you don't you um, not only have the acquisition cost of uh, a piece of technology, but you also have to look at it over time in terms of how much it costs to not only acquire it but to use it, and so hence the term total cost of ownership. Thanks. I always appreciate those clarifications there. Um, some so getting into some of the other questions here. Um, we were talking a lot about you know what's really good about moving into the cloud. Um, can we talk a little bit about you know let's face facts? What are some of the downsides of ECM in the cloud? Um, Tim, did, uh, do you want to start with that and just like some of the, the challenges yeah, I think, that ECB? I think I think, the, I think the elephant that's in the room when you talk about cloud and your content is um, the, the the feeling about security. Uh, you know where where does my data reside? Um, and, and when we chat to customers, it's, it's, it's the number one issue. You know, I, absolutely, there is no way whilst I breathe or live that important company documents will go out outside of, uh, you know, the, the, these organizations' walls. Um, when, when you actually challenge it a little bit further, um, I, I think you then find, well, hang on a minute, aren't, aren't you the same organization that's using Salesforce? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We restore all of our customer information in the cloud. It's just our documents. Uh, we, we don't want to be there. Um, but I think there is, I think there is a valid uh, concern there. They want to know, you know, are those data centers secure? Are documents being replicated to other geographies and legislations that mean they come under other rules and regulations? And I think there's some very valid questions within that 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 that, that can be um, uh, uh, addressed. Um, and as John said, it, it, it's hybrid. You know, cloud isn't necessarily for 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 everyone, and you know, some people do want to have things on premise. Um, the challenge we have when we talk to a lot of customers is on premise they're then down to their own t own IT team to to have to deliver the infrastructure and that that's often where some organizations um, get challenged and and actually you end up delivering to their own outsourced cloud um, but running under their own private cloud as part of their organization so you know cl clouds are clouds are funny name John I don't know if you want to add anything to that yeah I think that it's 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 an interesting thing. I think you touched on a on a point earlier, um, and I'll go back to this slide uh, just for a second. Um, you touched on a point I think that's that's really important, Tim, which is that uh, what's happening in terms of enterprise applications is that enterprise applications are shifting from these these huge, gigantic, monolithic, um, gigantic, long-term project kinds of things to things that can be bought in a much more modular fashion and bought by the drink, and often, and this is where the um, catch-22 is, they often include with them um, their own vehicle to capture the content associated with the application. So, you know, at first blush, that sounds pretty good. You know, you think, gosh, I can get up and running a lot more quickly than I used to be. I, you know, don't have to... Um, have my IT people involved as much as they used to. The business can start to make some of these decisions. Um, we don't have to wait around in a queue in order to get some of our applications um, taken care of. Uh, and that's all good stuff. But I think, you know, from a strategy perspective, you have to think about this down the road, which is you've got to make sure that from a content perspective that the information that goes along with these applications doesn't get locked up within an application and not accessible to other applications, which again says really have to think about um, that old question of silos, 
Uh, we've been talking about that in the um, document and content management business for 20 for 15 years now. And uh, one of my concerns looking forward is that I think there there is some risk in organizations that in the speed to adopt that these information and content systems get even further balkanized than they were before. Um, I do think the cloud has a role to play, cloud-based repositories in terms of linking up some of these. But that is, an, that is a risk out there that Tim highlighted, and I think it is something that we have to think about. Thanks, John. Um, and it, just as you guys were talking, it was just making me realize that you know, with, with the um, – some of the, some of the peril or the downside of, of being in the cloud that some people see is that um, you know if they put their information in the cloud they might might want to tend to forget it and then that sort of abandons all of the um, you know information management you know planning that they do you know for you know just thinking in terms of I hate using the term records management but still with, you know, with properly managing that information for sound information gover governance and, and it, it's I think it's still critical to still work with your information regardless where that repository is. Yeah, right. I think these are these are information assets. Um, you know, one of the fundamental points that um, that I hope uh, people took away is that in a disruptive time how you handle your information assets becomes a key source of competitive advantage or disadvantage. And so that that age-old question of, you know, those are assets that need to be managed, it can't be you know, just because you know, cloud is part of the strategy doesn't mean that you abdicate responsibility for managing it. It's actually the opposite. You have to extend that responsibility out into um, out into the cloud. Um, another question that we have coming in here is, uh, you know, a lot of really good strategy and, and and discussion that we're having today. You know, how can how can we start getting our teammates, our supervisors, the the executives? Um, excited about these kind of initiatives. Um, just, you know, Tim, if we can start with you. Uh, just some thoughts or tips or just ways to bring others in the organization on board for thinking and, and changing the, the strategic way of thinking. Um, I, I think you, you almost have to go back to understand the, the, the reality of the, the, the challenge that the teammates and the executives have within their business, which is, you know, John mentioned it's, it's an information asset. Well, those information assets are in some cases very hard to find. Um, they're having to go to multiple locations, get people to go and find them, or, they're st or to try and make them easy to find, they're actually storing them m multiple times. Uh, I think the, the way you get excited is, is by actually trying some of the new things. You know, I, 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 for my sins, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon. Sometimes when I wake up the following day after I've had a drink with my wife, I wonder what I've bought. Um, but you know, no one, no one actually gave me any training to use Amazon. No one gave me any training to use some of these new systems that are out there. And the millennials, again, they, they don't care. You know, I, I think you get excited when an application is just so easy to use that actually you just don't think about it anymore. It just gives you what you want when you want it. Um, and it, it sells itself. Um, I, I don't know how to make it more complex than that, but um, I, I, I think you have to you have to try these things. Um, and, and you know, it, it's easy in my world because I, I get to see customers when they see some of these solutions, and their jaw drops, and they go, "Wow!" You know, and I went to one meeting where they said, "Sorry, show that, show me that again, sh sh show me that again," and then they brought another colleague in, and another. But by the end of the, literally in one meeting, at the end there were 20 people sat in the room going. Wow, how did you just do that? And, and for me, this stuff's just commonplace. It's how document management systems should work. But, you know, I, I, I think it's a, it's a case of trying the new systems um, and, and seeing what they can do for, for, for your business. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I was going to... I was almost going to uh, rise to my feet and say amen about your point about trying things, Tim, for a minute, because one of my pet peeves um, amongst uh, a lot of executives um, is that you know, they tend to have a perspective that's based on a lot of experience. And, um, and you know, I, I mean, even as recently as a year or two ago, I would talk to people about either Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or any of the, you know, kind of more prevalent social platforms. And they say, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. And, and I was like, well, my goodness, well, you at least have to understand this. Maybe long term it isn't for you personally, but if you don't understand what this is and if you don't understand 
how the world has changed, you can't possibly help to guide your business to um, adapt and incorporate those changes. So um, the first one for me, I agree totally with you, Tim, is this open your eyes question. Second one, which uh, also, again, I was going to rise to my feet with an amen, was the usability question. Um, in our survey of um, ECM systems last year, um, in which we you know, asked people a whole series of questions about, um, about their ECM systems, you know, the number one Achilles heel that came out is the, is the usability of those systems. And we've moved into an era in which, from the perspective of an individual knowledge worker, these systems need to be just as simple to use as what they use in their daily life. And if they require manuals, if they require um, courses in order to learn to use the application and stuff like that, you know, just forget it. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna work anymore. Uh, people that implement. And also, I think, John, if they need is to actually understand how to implement and grow agile new functionality, yeah. then, the, you know, not just the use of it, it's how does it grow to solve other business problems. Yep, exactly. And that ties to my, my third thing, my last thing I was going to say, which is that, um, you know, and I've said this for a while, but I think it's even more acute now. Like when it comes to selling these technologies up in your organization, um, or when it comes to selling them, frankly, from a, you know, from a perspective of a vendor trying to sell into an organization, um, nobody ever woke up in the morning and slapped themselves in the head and said, you know, damn, I need some document management today. <laughs> um, they need what document management enables, which is, um, which is, you know, this has to be articulated in terms of the business processes and business results that executives care about. Um, they don't care how you get the results. Um, I think getting to results now increasingly requires that cloud be part of your strategy. But again, it's all about process, it's all about result, and that's where you have to focus the upsell, I think. Some really good points there. Thank you, guys. Um, just wanted to, we're getting close to the end of our webinar hour, and just want to mention to everyone, um, if you haven't heard, AIM is going to be in, in the New Orleans um, in the United States for our annual conference coming up at the end of April. And uh, John, I know you want to, you're one of our featured keynote speakers for that, and we have um, a couple of other really good keynote speakers, Eric Qualman and uh, Jacob Morgan lined up to be there. Um, you, you want to give a quick preview of what's coming uh, at the conference there? Oh, sure, yeah. What we're going to do there is uh, basically the theme is uh, putting the digital transformation into action, and so um, that's the focus. Um, it's not a trade show. Um, it's a thought leadership conference. Um, so if you have, um, I know uh, travel can be tough sometimes. We're also going to be live streaming some aspects of it, so you might want to keep an eye out for that. Um, but if you're a person that is charged with your organization with helping to build the information management strategy to deal with disruption, you know, this is kind of the place that you should be. And so we're going to focus on three primary themes. Um, one is how do you handle and governance and security in this crazy era that we're moving into. Secondly, how do you deal with the fact that uh, processes are now being bought by the app rather than um, implemented in the traditional top-down kind of way? How do you deal with that? Um, and, and how do you think about that? And then thirdly, we're going to spend some time thinking about, okay, well, how does the convergence of data and content, and most users don't care about this distinction that we all make in the content management industry. Again, they just care about processes, um, which have both data and content associated with them. You know, how do you draw insight from this uh, increasing volume of stuff that we're all accumulating, um, and how do you turn um, not only big data but dark data into something meaningful? And so, yeah, it, it, it's going to be a really great time. And um, if anybody has uh, some travel budget out there, that um, um, definitely it's worth. I can guarantee it'll be worth your time. And um, and if you can't, just you know, watch the space for some uh, information on live streaming. Thanks, John. Really great summary there. Um, just wanted to mention to everyone, uh, you know, we have been recording this webinar, and it will be available in a day or two um, uh, back on, the, on our website, and we'll certainly let um, everyone who had registered uh, have access to that replay link cause, uh, just to you know, listen to this uh, presentation again, share it with your colleagues. There's just some good information we've been sharing. Um, also, just to remind you that we have the, um, those resources available to you, and um, 
Also, when the webinar is over, a brief survey is going to open up on your desktop and, and greatly value your feedback and really do want to hear from you. Um, so just appreciate if you take a few moments to offer your comments, suggest future topics for us to cover, and, and just to give us that feedback. Uh, greatly like to thank our underwriters um, on Base by Highland and Twofold. Without the support from our solution providers, AIM wouldn't be able to provide you with these free educational programs. So thank you on Base for your support and, and Twofold for your time today. Um, it's been very, it's been a really great experience here. And just as we bring this webinar to a close, um, I just want to go back to each of our speakers and you know, get your closing thought or a key takeaway and something to leave, uh, the, the, the grand words of wisdom to leave with our audience members. So I'm going to start first with Tim Miller of Twofold, your closing thoughts today. Gee, Tim, I think we're, under, we're, under, we're under some obligation here to have words of wisdom. <laughs> I don't know about this. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll leave it to Charles Darwin of Oval Die. No, I think, I think my, 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 final, my final thoughts are the great thing about the cloud is it does allow you to try. You know, if, if ultimately you want it to be on-premise, it can be. But you can try it in the cloud. It's there. It's working now. You can play with it. And if it works for you, fantastic. Use it and adopt it. I think on my Thank side. Thank you. And, mm -hmm. I'm, yes, I'm sorry, Teresa, I jumped your gun there. Um, I assume you were going to ask me for my opinion. At, what, what were you? <laughs> well, now that you mention it, <laughs> yes, please, John, your closing thoughts today. <laughs> sure. I think, I think for me, um, and I've been doing this a long time, I, you know, one of the things that I've noticed about this, um, this industry and this space is that you know, when we talk about elevator speeches um, to describe what we do and why we do it and how we do it, um, I often think that um, most of these presentations would require an elevator to Saturn in order to uh, <laughs> have enough time. You know, we, we make this. I used to say the Burj Al. Yeah, I used to say the Burj Al Khalifa. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. make this so complicated, and I think, I think actually the, you know, what we all collectively do, both as users that use these systems and um, vendors that create these solutions. Um, you know, we really are, 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 are doing something that's pretty basic. You know, basically what we're doing is we are trying to create structures so that our knowledge workers know where to put their stuff um, so that it achieves two ends. Um, the first one is so that the business can meet its objectives and so the business can be compliant and stay out of trouble and document what it does and can understand what it does and add value to its customers. And then the second thing, the second objective, and this is the hard one moving forward, and this is where the cloud, I think, really factors into it, um, that it does so in a way that knowledge workers can work where they want to work, how they want to work, on the systems that they want to work, in friendly systems. And those two objectives, one an organizational one and one a personal knowledge worker one, those are the two objectives that need to be met uh, for these systems to be effective. And I think that's where the cloud ultimately becomes a big part of your strategy. Thank you, John. Um, really grand words of wisdom there, so uh, pat yourself on the back. <laughs> um, this is the end of our webinar hour. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks again to OnBase by Highland and Twofold for their participation. Thank you to our speakers, and uh, everyone have a good afternoon. We'll see you next time.